We are now almost a month into the Russia-Ukraine invasion. We know there have been at least 19,000 people killed, 10 million people displaced, about 2,000 buildings destroyed, and about $119 billion worth of property damage. We also know that there are ripple effects to the space industry that go across the board. And we just learned that SpaceX will now be helping OneWeb helping its competition to launch satellites into space. Neil Masterson, the CEO of OneWeb, says we thank SpaceX for their support, which reflects our shared vision for the boundless potential of space. With these launch plans in place, we're on track to finish building our full fleet of satellites and deliver robust, fast, secure connectivity around the globe. So this is kind of crazy. Roscosmos is losing one of its biggest customers and SpaceX is stepping in to help its competition. Well, let me ask you this question. Yeah. Who is your competition? We have no serious competition. None. Not presently. Okay, I know that this interview is kind of a throwback, but when you consider the fact that Starlink hopes to deploy 42,000 satellites compared to just under 700 for OneWeb and about 3,200 for Project Kuiper, whenever that is gonna be, you can see by far and large, Starlink has the biggest constellation. So launching OneWeb satellites doesn't seem to be too much of a threat. The biggest threat is to get Starlink profitable. OneWeb and its progress was basically held hostage and now they will be able to resume their launches. They're expecting the first SpaceX launch to be sometime later this year. I recently did a live stream with Harvard astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell and Jeff Cheesum. He is the lead engineer on the SunShield for the James Webb Space Telescope. But during the conversation, I wanted to ask Jonathan what his thoughts are and what he's noticing with the ripple effects of this invasion and how it's impacting the space industry after, you know, we've had a couple weeks to process exactly what's going on. So here's what he had to say. I was going to say, I, Jonathan, I haven't talked to you since everything, you know, is going on in Ukraine. I've done a couple of videos about Starlink being used in Ukraine. And I just, just, is there anything you want to comment on with like the Russian space program? Well, I think, you know, here's the thing. Over the past 30 years, the Russian space industry and the European American space industries have become very intertwined. Mm -hmm. And we are now realizing that that has going to have to be untangled. And that is going to cause a lot of pain over the net to the space industry over the next few years. So I'll get, let me give you a couple of examples. Right. The, the, the Soyuz rocket uh, was being used by the OneWeb company to launch its communication satellite. They've got a whole bunch of satellites being held hostage, basically, in Baikonur. They've got to find another rocket to launch the rest of their constellation on. Literally the next day, we found out that SpaceX will be that company that will help them and provide them with that rocket to launch OneWeb satellite. So this is a little bit outdated, but Jonathan didn't even expect this to happen. The Russian rocket was also being launched from Kourou, from French Guiana. The people, the Russians have been sent home. That is probably never going to launch from French Guiana again. That uh, is my guess and uh, and several major spacecraft including the euclid space telescope uh we're gonna we're, we're gonna fly on that they've got to find new launch vehicles which will take years um the uh exomars project was a joint european russian mars probe that was going to launch this year now that's not going to happen uh maybe ever a lot of communication satellites built in the west use uh ion engine thrusters built by a company called Fakel uh, in Russia. Uh, so, you know, that's a problem. Uh, the Cygnus cargo ship that goes to the space station is launched on a rocket called Antares, who's uh, uh, Northrop Grumman uh, uh, builds the Antares. And as, as, uh, the, the, uh, the lower stage is built in Dnipro in eastern Ukraine uh, using engines from a Russian company. Uh, and so they've got a couple in uh, uh, in the U.S. ready to go. But after that, I don't think they're going to be getting any more of those. So they're going to have to redesign that rocket, I'm guessing, and on and on. And and so so there's just so many ways in which we depended on on uh, Russian technology being part of our projects. And uh, I, I should have mentioned the uh, Erosita 
telescope, which was a fabulous European X-ray telescope that's been doing great science, but it's hosted on a Russian satellite. And so Germany, it's a German telescope. The Germans decided they had to shut it down because they weren't going to do any scientific collaboration with Russia. And so that stopped doing science, uh, really important science, because, uh, you know, it's just, well, we can't be doing that with the Russians anymore. Um, so so I'm, I'm like ranting on all these different things that should give you a sense of it's been a huge disruption right. uh, to the space industry. ISS is carrying on unchanged. Mark van der Heij is going to come down. The American National is going to come down on the Soyuz in Kazakhstan uh, shortly, and and that's and, you know new Russian astronauts just arrived on the space station, and that's all carrying on unchanged so far. I don't know how long that can last. Right. Um, and uh, the Russia, the U.S. wanted to extend the ISS to 2030. There were a lot of media outlets reporting that as like it was a done deal. But the Russians have not agreed to extend it to 2030. The current agreement only extends to 2024. Uh, and it's hard for me to see now how the U.S. can argue for extending it to 2030 and continuing that collaboration with the, uh, partnership with the Russians. Uh, right. Politically, it just doesn't seem to fly to me. So I am predicting that the ISS will not, you know, people are going, oh, you know, the Russians are going to do something crazy in the next couple of months. I don't think so. Uh, Rogozin, the Russian space agency boss, is blowhard who says all kinds of crazy things but but i think the iss will carry on for now but i'm guessing it will be deorbited in 2024 because i don't see how they're going to agree on, on on extending it in the current political situation so so yeah it has huge, i mean the consequences let's say the consequences of the space industry are trivial compared to the consequences for the people of ukraine right right but Space industry is what I know about, so that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And, and it's a huge disruption to this to the global space industry. Yeah, um, I was just kind of curious because we had emailed kind of like right when all of this started, and you know now that we've had several weeks to see how this is unfolding, it sounds like it's just having huge ripple effects. Huge ripple effects all over the place. Every day, there's some new thing we go. Oh yeah, I forgot the Russians were involved in that. Oh, that's gone now. And and yeah, it's it's um uh and oh by the way, it's going to have an even worse effect on the Russian space program, uh, uh, especially if we end the ISS partnership. Uh, um, it's a key source of income for their space program. Um, the Russian communication satellites use European communications payloads. So what they do is all the communications bit is done by Thales Alenia or Alcatel or something, you know, and, and that gets put on a Russian spacecraft bus. And that's how Russian television satellites work. Uh, they, cause they, you know, could build satellite buses, but they weren't really up to speed on the, on the high tech communication stuff. And so they've just been important that from Europe. So that's going to be that's going to you know wreck their communication satellite industry that that that's going to be over now um and uh, they've already you know the russian launch rate has been going down um it's it's just going to crater now with sanctions and with end of collaboration so so uh uh they are really shooting themselves in the foot uh um in that respect right so I was just blown away to see that headline this morning that OneWeb will now be getting help from SpaceX. SpaceX is incredible and it's not only involved itself in helping Ukraine by providing Starlink satellite internet service, but now it's helping a competitor, something that a lot of us thought wouldn't happen. And they're stepping in to help. So I wanna know from you in the comments, are you surprised to see this? Please comment below. Make sure that if you're not subscribed to Ellie and Space, you do that right now. Click that subscribe button, hit that like button, and thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you soon.